Hello everyone, how's it going? I am the Average Guy 1983. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. I'm outside in my backyard and uh, there might be some noise you're going to hear in the background, so I apologize for that. I'm going to try to speak as loud as I can into this microphone so you guys can actually hear me as loud as possible. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to repair the Inmotion RS tire. I got a flat on my previous video that I did of uh, taking my Inmotion RS for an errand and I got a really thick quarter inch screw it was a thick quarter inch screw in there i tried patching it up with plugs that you stick in with little strings and it didn't work because the hole was too big so uh today i'm going to be using these patches that i have right here to be able to patch up the inside of the tire so i'm going to remove the old plug out of it and i'm going to make sure that i clean it up and put in this kind of patch so that this way the tire stays well inflated and it handles the 50 pounds of air pressure that i put on these tires uh so with that said i did want to let you guys know that yes i do have some tires here that I purchased at Vora Motors for $45 a piece. I did want to give you guys a disclaimer and let you guys know that yes, I am an official partner of Vora Motors. However, I cannot get any kind of discounts whatsoever on any accessories or other scooters because I will be violating the terms and conditions of the partnership. I paid full price for these at $45 a piece. Here is a screenshot of what I actually paid, which was about $108 and some change. Uh, with that said, these tires are actually self-healing and I should be swapping the original tires for these ones that have self-healing versus a non-self-healing but because these tires have less than 30 miles in them i'd rather waste these tires first and then after i waste them put these new ones on and have these as spares for the meantime so um i hope that the image doesn't look clickbait but we're going to go ahead and get started i'm going to show you guys what's on this table that you're probably going to need some of the stuff you might not need depending on the installation of the uh tire patch and uh, we'll go from there so with that said let me show you guys what's on the table all right so the first thing you're going to need is going to be one of these uh, this is actually a floor jack designed for electric scooters and vespa scooters um, i ideally would prefer to, to get something that has wheels in the bottom uh, this is okay for what it is but i am going to be getting another one so i'm going to put down this one here and the one that i'm going to be getting in a few months in the description so you guys can choose which one you would prefer to have for yourself for your own electric scooter uh, keep in mind the Inmotion RS does weigh about 125 pounds so it is a heavy scooter this can tolerate it though just know this thing can handle a, apparently up to 600 pounds of weight so considering that it's solid on the floor it might be ideal but I like the idea of being able to move the scooter with wheels on it if I ever have to change out these tires now these tires are the ones from Voro Motors these were $45 a piece and as you guys can see they look identical to the ones that come with the RS and on the inside you can kind of see that there's actually the sticky residue inside so if I put it here you can hear the stickiness there you have it this is what it is and uh, ideally I would be switching these tires out but um, because my tires have less than 30 miles in them I just rather patch it up for now and then later on if the tire happens to tear up even further where it's not repairable or patchable then i will go ahead and swap over to these tires instead but i'm hoping to have at least a thousand to two thousand miles on the original tires first before i swap these out but i just wanted to buy these in advance before pricing ends up going up on these tires so um let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the stuff that's on the table that you're going to most likely need okay so these are the patches that i purchased that we're going to be needing for the tire repair i just have to select which patch works best for it and then install it and uh this is a 60 count. I bought it because I don't know how many times I'm going to be getting flat. So I figured I have more patches instead of not enough. So um, they're divided in Ziploc bags. I actually did that. They don't come like that. I separated everything just to make sure I really do have 56 patches. The 60 count thing has to do with the little scraping tools and the glue sticks that come with it. So that includes, you know, basically 60. So uh, with that said, this is what we're going to be using. We have a uh, power drill that has the bit that's going to be used to lift up this uh, floor jack we have some mechanic gloves just in case we need them we have some seat clamps that we're going to be using today instead of zip ties so that we can be able to remove the tire a lot easier from the rim and um, we have some other things like the mallet that we're going to be using this tool right here is basically used for some window screens but i'm going to be using it to uh, smash in the uh, tire patch into the tire wall so that this way i can be able to uh, firmly put it onto the tire and uh, normally you would use something that has little ridges on the edges but this is all I have to work with for now so uh, I did order that thing but it hasn't arrived from Amazon so I figured I just stop waiting and just get this rolling right here we have a simple red pry tool this is just to be able to move the little 
uh, black cap off of the uh, bolt that we're gonna have to be removing. And this is gonna be the blade to be able to remove the uh, thing that I installed, the little patch thing that didn't work out. So this is not something that you're generally going to need. And then these are the little spoons that you're gonna be needing to be able to remove the tire off of the uh, rim, which is gonna be needed. These are to be able to protect your rim from getting scratches off of these things and the hex keys that we're gonna be needing here to be able to uh, remove the screws and bolts off of the uh, RS tire. The only other thing that I don't have on this table is the 21 millimeter socket that's gonna be needed to be able to remove the bolts that are on the edges of the tires and that's about it. So let's go ahead and move on over to the RS so I can show you guys how to remove the wheel. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so we have the RS right on top of the uh, floor jack. We just gotta lift it up a little bit so we can be able to loosen up the rear tire and get it off. Right around there should be good. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we're gonna need is gonna be a 2.5 millimeter hex key to remove the little bolt that's here for the uh, fender. Uh, this is just the top plate so um, if you don't have the fender installed you can basically skip this and go straight to removing the uh, connector for the motor next thing we're going to be doing is removing the bolts that are on the edges here of the fender that you can see here and here uh, you just need a three millimeter hex key for this Once you remove this part, normally it would be easy to come off, but because I have my dash cam installed, um, I don't want to remove the zip ties from this. So um, just remove the screw from here so you can get access to the motor cable and obviously the cable that I attach for the uh, dash cam and we'll be set to go. All right, guys, once we have the screw off of here, put your little uh, grommet thingy here and the screw in a safe location where you won't lose this. And then you can go ahead and put your fender out of the way. Now we can go ahead and disconnect the motor's cable and start getting to these bolts. Just like that. Now we just need the pry tool to get these little plastic caps off. Okay, repeat this on the opposite side. Okay, next step is going to be to remove these bolts that are on both sides. You're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket and this is a uh, red color which is metric and just hold on to it like this and keep your hand stable here like this so you can be able to keep it uh, steady and then start loosening up in your direction going towards you like counterclockwise. Just make sure that you have the patience to do this. There's one and all we need to do is secure it in a box and repeat the same step on the opposite side. Alrighty, my friends, the next thing we're gonna be doing is just uh, removing the caliper. Once we get it off with the five millimeter hex key, we're just going to try to get this motor off and then we can deflate it and go ahead and remove it off the rim. Don't forget that once you uninstall the caliper, you are going to need to realign it uh, with the um, rotor that's here. All right, this has been unscrewed. Now we can go ahead and move this to the side just like that so it doesn't get messed with. There's also these washers that need to be moved out of the way on both sides so make sure you take those off too and just put them right next to the actual bolts of your uh, motor so you don't lose them. And now we can just lift up the uh, scooter a bit higher off the ground with the floor jack and start getting this motor off. Okay so this is pretty stuck on here you want to grab a rubber mallet and just hit it from the edges here to get it down. Do that on both sides and you'll be able to get it off. There we go. All right, we got the motor off. Now let's go ahead and deflate the tire and remove the tire and patch it up, reinstall it and repeat everything I just did in the video backwards so you can reinstall everything. Okay, so here's the tire. I already moved it out of the way. I have it on the table. There are some additional little washers that you have to remove from here as well. I didn't realize that both sides have these little washers too. So you have a set of four washers. So make sure you put these in the same position they're supposed to be in. Apparently they're facing in this direction. So we're gonna see how they reinstall back into the scooter. But yeah, this is how it's gonna go. And uh, yeah, just remember to get these out of the way as well. 
So as you guys can see here, this is my patch job. This did not work out well because as you guys can see, look, if I squeeze the tire, you can see there's absolutely zero air inside of this tire. So unfortunately the plug didn't work because the hole that was here was too large with that quarter inch screw. And the material for this patch was smaller than that quarter inch screw for this. So I'm gonna grab the seat clamps so I can go ahead and put them on the edges of the wheels here on the tires, squeeze the inner part of the wall of the tire inwards and remove it off of the rim. Alrighty, here we go. All right, so unfortunately these smaller size seat clamps didn't work. Add some soapy water around the edge of the rim so we can try to get it off. Unfortunately, these things didn't work. Uh, they're too big for this motor. So I have to do it without it, which means that I'm most likely going to end up scratching the rim, which freaking sucks, but it is what it is. Alrighty, we got one part off. Now we got to get the backside off and it should be pretty easy to get off from here. Okay, so do the same thing for the backside. Grab a little bit of water with soap and rub it around the edge here to try to get the uh, motor off. There we go, we got it off. All right, so here's the motor, here's the tire. So we can see on the inside of the tire, there's a lot of this uh, stuff inside. Gonna go ahead and clean it off. You can kind of see right there why I did the patch job. I'm gonna remove this nub from here and we're gonna be putting on a patch. And unfortunately, uh, the way I have the camera angle is really hard for me to show you guys how I'm gonna do this. So I'm just gonna try to cut it off real quick or pull it out and then we'll go from there. All right, so I pulled the plug out. This did absolutely nothing. So I don't recommend these if you have any large quarter inch size screws that go into your tire. But we have confirmed that there is absolutely zero uh, glue like the other tires from Vora Motors. Uh, so convenience of this, you can patch up the tire, reinstall it, inflate it with air and you're good to go. Bad thing about it is that if you don't have a tire kit with you to repair your scooter or tire on the spot, uh, this is going to like not work out for you like what happened with me. So again, this has really good threading. So I'm not going to uh, install the new tire. I'm gonna go ahead and patch this one up and then go from there. So we can kind of see the tire right here where the hole's at. It's right there. See how you can kind of see the opening there? That's what we're gonna patch up. So I just have to sand it down and uh, put a patch. We're gonna start scuffing the tire with this and uh, just get some of this material off and make sure that we make it, you know, sandy enough to be able to have the glue stick to it and not come off. And then uh, let the glue, you know, do its thing here. And we are gonna need to clean this up. So maybe grab a little vacuum, shop vac or something and use the holes to clean up the inside of the tire to make sure you don't have any of this residue stuff left over. All right, that seems pretty good there. I'm gonna clean up the inside here real quick off camera with the vacuum. And uh, then we'll start installing the patch after we put on the glue. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so now that this is already done, I will show you guys an image of what it looks like off my smartphone. There you go. We're gonna go ahead and install this patch. We're gonna take it off and we're gonna install it in there and then we're gonna use this just to like push it against the uh, rubber and we should be good to go. So let me do that now. Okay, so this part of the patch is just a tiny bit sticky but not really nothing. So I can see why the glue, which is uh, this one right here, why it's needed. So we're gonna go ahead and patch it up right now. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, patch this in, grab this thing here. And what we wanna do is just start basically pressing it down so it gets really stuck onto the wall of the tire. There we go. That should be good. Oh yeah, this ain't going nowhere. Okay, you can kind of see the tire patch right there. I already patched it up. I'm really sorry, but I'm using the Alpha 7 IV, so I can't really put the camera in here so you guys can see it, but you can see the tire from there, right? The little patch job. It's on there. It's not going anywhere. It's really stuck on there. Now we can go ahead and repeat the process, reinstall the tire, inflate it up, and reinstall it into the uh, RS and make sure there's no leaks. Alrighty, so once again, now that we have to uh, install this tire back into this motor, I did scratch up the motor man, the edges of here, but it's not a big deal. I could always put a little bit of um, like a touch up paint 
it's gonna have to be in a flat black in order for it to look decent and I can just grab a little brush and just you know clean it off make it look decent it's fine um, it's really too bad that on this kit this little uh, thing didn't work man I guess it was too thick and it would work better for like uh, regular car tires or rims but I guess it didn't work for this because if I would have tried putting it in here like this it wouldn't have worked anyways number one this part right here this tab is in the way so it wouldn't even go in in the first place so you can see that there was just no way to get it in there I could have done it backwards where this part is sticking out and done it like this but again you can see that it just doesn't go all the way in and this would have been uh, too much um, material for the tiny tire wall that's here so this was kind of useless but the spoons which were these ones here were very useful and I ended up only needing one I thought I was gonna need two of them one was more than enough so that's pretty cool um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this back okay um, it's the same thing the motor is facing this way like if the RS was facing in that direction okay so again these arrows have to be facing in the forward position of the RS so for example it's like this the uh, arrows are facing in the direction of the handlebar and this is the same way we have to get it reinstalled so we need to be real careful because obviously this side here has the um, the rotor and we don't want to mess this up so let me see how I'm going to do this and try to get it installed I am going to be using again more of this um, water with uh, soap solution it's just regular dish soap on this uh, sprayer just to spray the edge of the tire to get this uh, wheel to go back in so let me do that now let's see if I can get it in this way yeah it should be this way let's see if I can at least get it in from one side and then we can work our way to the other side all right got it in there that's one side now the trick is to get this uh tire over this front part here <laughs> so that's the other little tricky part it's not going to be that easy because this right here is in the way and obviously on a regular tire for a car you wouldn't be dealing with these little slots uh bolt thingies here on the edge i already made a hole right here having this on here so that kind of does suck maybe i can just reuse that put it back in there like i did earlier and then try to get it on no it just made things worse <laughs> let me get this off so i'm going to put on a bit of soapy water rub it around the edge of the tire just like that and try to slide it back in there and hope i can get it in what's making it hard to put this back on is the rotor that's on the opposite side all right, I've been on this for about 10 minutes now and I still can't get this tire in. Okay, let me see if I can. Oh my God, seriously, why? Wow, this is really something else. Alrighty guys, so um, I apologize for not being able to show the rest of this. Um, this was really hard to do. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 where 1 is easy and 10 is hard this was a freaking 10 um, even with all the tools that I have I wasn't able to get this and you guys can see here I scraped the crap out of the edge of the rim because I couldn't get this uh, those little slot things that I told you about and the same thing on this side here so to fix this little area here where I scraped off the paint I'm just going to have to use touch up paint from Duplicolor in a flat black and just touch it up with a little brush and we're good to go i also had to remove the disc brake um this wasn't able to be on here while i was doing this because this was getting in the way of moving around i even jacked up my table you can kind of see all the holes that i did here based on these bolts that are here on the sides so i damaged this table and uh not a good idea so at the end i ended up having to do the zip tie method along with this and continue to keep rolling it i had to put it on the cement floor and put my foot resting against the tire pressing down in order to get this uh, tire to go back on so the only thing I have to do now is just remove the zip ties from here one two three and four now that that's off this tire is already on from this side and again this side here the tire is placed in the correct manner so if we put it like this this is exactly how the tire should be with the arrow facing this way towards the scooter's handlebars. 
So let me go ahead and install this uh, disc brake back on here. Once I have it on, uh, I'll be able to install it back into the scooter, reinflate the tire, and then I'll uh, check it for air leaks and make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. And we'll go from there. But so far, it seems like the patch was a success, but again, not an easy task. But I'm recording this so you guys can see what exactly it takes for a uh, scooter technician to have to work on your scooter. So now you guys know, man, that this was a much difficult job, not for the everyday do-it-yourself person either. All right, guys, well, apologies for that. Apparently my freaking camera there, my Alpha 7 IV, ran out of memory recording in 4K60. And uh, all I'm gonna say is that this job was really hard. Uh, it's definitely not for a first time DIYer, especially like myself. That's, this is the first time I do this with the tire. I really scraped the crap out of my rim and I'm gonna have to use some kind of, uh, like I mentioned earlier, a duplicate color, like a magic pen or some sort, like in a flat black color so that I can cover up the scratches on the rim. Uh, I went ahead and I tested out the scooter already. Everything's working great. Uh, the only thing I need to do is just align the um, caliper up on the back of the rim where the uh, rear tire was changed out. Now I understand why a lot of people don't even bother to do video tutorials on replacing uh, tires or anything like that on electric scooters specifically. So um, yeah, is this something for any person to do? honestly no it's not um, i would honestly recommend that you get in touch with somebody that actually knows what they're doing that won't scratch up your rim that's number one that actually has the equipment to do that because like you guys can see this table i broke this table this table broke i'm gonna have to take it back to the store because of the amount of pressure that i applied to try to get the tire back into the rim um i ended up breaking one side of the um of the leg right here on this side from the locking mechanism so it locks from this side it locks from the front over here on this side but it doesn't lock from the back side now so um i think a wooden table would probably be better oh one more thing um i forgot to mention that in order to get air on the tires i had to use my air tank that you see there um, because the original uh, electronic air pump that i have was not strong enough to provide any air into the tire so um Make sure that you have one of these air tanks or you go to a gas station to fill up. It's going to take a bit. You kind of have to move the tire around so it can tighten up around the edges of the rim and it starts getting inflated. So um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention this real quick before we end the video. Like I said earlier, I ended up having to use the uh, zip tie method and two of these to put the tire back on. So to remove the tire, super easy you guys got to see that it was very easy to remove it but to put it back on you needed two of these plus four zip ties up down left right like a plus sign and once you tighten them up it's much easier to roll with these ones around the tire to get the uh the tire uh, put back on and you do have to remove the uh brake disc the uh, rotor in order to be able to do this job so uh, i didn't want to remove it this was my first time doing it would I do it again? Yeah, to replace the tire if I ever need to with those uh, self-healing ones instead that I bought from Voro Motors, but uh, I won't be doing that on camera. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Again, I started at 12 p.m. and I ended at 5.30 p.m. So uh, let me show you guys real quick the scooter so you guys can see I already test rode it. There's no air leaks, no nothing. So I apologize for not being able to show you the reinstallation of the rim and tire back into the scooter. That was a little difficult to do with aligning the little slots of the bolts into the uh, scooter and having to use that uh, rubber mallet hammer thing into the scooter to be able to get the things realigned. So let me show you guys real quick. All right, and my friends, so here's the scooter already put back together. Uh, I'm holding on to my Alpha 7 IV with the rig. So I can show you guys how this looks like. This is so you guys can see that everything was able to be put back on. The problem, like I can show you here, you can see the scrapes all over the edges of the rim. It was unavoidable because the rim is black. So um, I'm not sure if anybody else is gonna have their stuff like that, but I was able to put it back. Right now, I have approximately 24 miles on the scooter and uh, everything overall is looking good. 
You guys can see everything here. There you go, here's the other side where I had the camera cable and everything. You can see the camera cable right there, the uh, cable for the motor right there. And there you go, that's everything. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. I apologize sincerely for uh, not doing a better job at this tire thing. This was really hard, man, and it's not for the average Joe, like I mentioned earlier. So again, I always try to do things myself because I'm just that kind of person. I always like to try things once and see how it works out. And again, would I consider redoing these tires again? Uh, yes, I would, but off camera because I know what I'm going to be doing and I know how hard of a hard time I'm gonna be having. So um, yeah, uh, at least I didn't have to wait, you know, a week or two to get this repaired at any uh, scooter repair shop for a tire. So um, yeah, I was able to do it within five hours because it also took me that long to set up all the camera gear and all the stuff on the table but i have everything there i have stuff right here and uh yeah man what a pain in the butt <laughs> but anyways this is it guys so here's my uh camera setup here you can see that i use a 32 inch monitor for uh my videos and my tripod that i have there my basement it's open in the bottom and uh yeah man now i have to put all of this back so anyways have a good one guys peace for now